I have Dr. Lee Waters on the line. Lee, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. The strength switch, uh, how the new science of strength-based parenting can help your child and teen to flourish. You've hit the nail on the head with this book. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's a wonderful book. Um, now, of course, I, I know a little bit about you from reading your book. Tell us how you, you got onto the, the strength-based parenting. Okay, yeah, no, that's a nice place to start. Well, I mean, it's a little bit of my own sort of personal backstory and then a little bit of my professional journey. Um, I've been a psychologist for over 20 years and a psychology researcher at the University of Melbourne for over two decades, um, studying in the field of positive psychology, which is a subfield of psychology that looks at kind of what's right with us and how do we build that. And that's in contrast to typical psychology, which is more about understanding what's wrong with us and how do we fix it. So that's kind of the professional journey. And then the personal journey in, um, I uh, was raised by a mother who had a very severe mental illness and that caused uh, some challenges, uh, I'll put it politely, um, and in my childhood, which led to an eating disorder for myself and my sister in my teens and a lot of depression and anxiety. Um, in my 20s and so when I found out I was pregnant in my early 30s and I was sort of studying this new science of positive psychology you know how do we find out what's right with us and build that I really I just wanted to make sure that um, I raised my children differently through the way that I had been raised and prevent my children from experiencing and suffering symptoms of mental illness and so my kind of personal life and my professional life converged and um, whereas I was studying the field of positive psychology in organisations and in schools, I started to also study that in relation to parenting, um, build up a, a good kind of research program and evidence base for the positive benefits that children and parents get when they parent using strength-based parenting and um, had lost my girlfriend saying, can you please write a book about this? We want to learn more about it. We don't want to have to go and read the scientific articles and... Eventually, I had enough of them say, please, 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 that I said, okay, you know what, I've got two kids, I'm a working mum, I have no time, <laughs> yeah. but I'm going to do this anyway because I know it's going to help a lot of families. I hear a lot of, uh, about a lot of parents, uh, particularly when it comes to sports and, and, and things like that, that uh, or, or even other, other things, that uh, parents often tell their child yeah oh that's that's fantastic and everything becomes fantastic but that's not quite mm. what you mean is it by strength-based parenting or, or positive psychology no and i'm so glad you raised that actually at the start of our discussion because that does tend to be um a sort of concern of parents when i talk about taking a strength-based approach is they they kind of swing the pendulum too far and they mm. think about you know the parents who kind of just falsely praise and um, you know are always praising their children. That's not what strength-based parenting is about because it's not it's not about false praise and it's not about always being positive. It, but at the same time, it's not about the other end of the spectrum either of like nagging and um, being critical all the time. It's kind of this nice place in the middle where you work as a parent to identify what are the positive qualities in my children, what are their skills, what are their talents, and praise them for those. But what you're doing is you're praising for them for something that's real, mm. not always kind of overinflated praise. You're working with them for and praising them for something that they genuinely really have. And the thing about strength based parenting is um, our kids are not always displaying their strengths in, in the same way that you or I are not always displaying our strengths. All of us have strengths, all of us have weaknesses. So there's no risk in strength based parenting of kind of over praising your kids because. Um, your kids aren't using their strengths all of the time. And the other thing is, even with adults, we don't always recognise our own strength as adults, do we, until someone tells us? Yeah, and that's, that's been um, one of the interesting findings that's come out of psychology research is this idea of strength blindness and that most of us have blindness towards our own strengths. The thing about strengths is that they're partly nature, so we're kind of they're partly born into us and then they're partly developed through our experiences but because they come naturally to us the strength is something that you perform well that you get energized by and you're self-motivated to do because a strength comes naturally to us we just assume we don't see it as something extra or something better 
um, we just assume, oh, that's easy, therefore it's not a strength. Everyone must have this. And so we become blind to our own strength. Parents become blind to the strength of their children because they kind of take it for granted that this kid's just naturally kind or this kid's always funny or this kid's good at sport. Mm. And when we have that blindness, then we're not able to intentionally make the most of and leverage off the strengths and the good points in our kids. So what sort of strengths are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Um, just two kind of broad categories of strengths. There's strengths of talent and there's strengths of character. So strengths of talent are skills, they're performance-based, they're the things, they're they're very observable. Um, And typically when we do talk about strengths, at least in our society, that's what we tend to think of. We think of sporting prowess, artistic ability, music ability, um, intellectual ability. But what the, the research in positive psychology has also done is, is identify this second and equally important category of strengths. And these are our strengths of character. So these are less skill-based, they're less observable because they're more to do with our internal personality. Um, and these are things like, you know, some, some people are just so kind. Some people are beyond brave. You know, you can't comprehend how courageous they are. Some some kids have this great sense of perspective and wisdom behind beyond their years or this know, really um, high levels of emotional intelligence. And so these aren't necessarily skill-based, but they're positive aspects of character that are also important strengths to ensure that we have a life well lived. Hmm. You've got a great exercise in your book, uh, Test Your Strength-Based Parenting. They're, they're such good questions. Just as a, I'll read out a, a few examples so, so people know what I'm talking about. Uh, Question six, I know what energises my children. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's such a simple question, yet uh, some people, like, it really questions how well you know your children, isn't it? Yeah, and and so that's a really insightful comment because, you know, ultimately strength-based parenting is is really about genuinely getting to know your child, who Mm. they are, Not, not who you think they should be, not who society says they should be. And it's about overcoming their strength blindness and seeing their strength for who they are, really are. It's about overcoming our negativity bias, which is our brain's natural tendency to zoom in and spend more time fixing what's wrong with our kids rather than what's building, building up what's right with our kids. And it's also about um, educating parents that strengths are not just the things your kids are good at, but they're also the things that your kids get energy from and that your kids are self-motivated to do. And, of course, it, that the... Uh this is, I mean, it's such a good book for parents because often they feel pressured to push their kids in, in certain directions with the, the pressures uh, with academics and, and, and school and, and sports and, and having their children in doing so many activities. Uh, it's um, You can understand why uh, some parents, uh, they're just going through the motions and are so busy that sometimes... It, I can I can completely understand that they probably don't know their children as well as what they think they might. Yeah, I think that's true too. I mean, I'm a parent. I have a 14 and a half year old son and a 10 year old daughter, and we're just like any other household. We we're probably overstocked and over busy. And I mean, I think I'm very lucky because because I've been a scientist and a psychologist in this field. I know what to do, and which is why all my girlfriends are saying, "Please write the book. Please write the book." But there there are a lot of pressures. And I think what's different about strength-based parenting, maybe compared to some of the other sort of parenting um, books, is that the anchor point is your own child. You start with your own child. You start with identifying what are their their strengths, what are their talents, what are their skills, what are their positive personality qualities, and that that gives you the roadmap to decide what activities you do, when you can have downtime. And so you're less tempted by um, or influenced by the performance pressures of society because you're using your own child as the anchor point and the roadmap for how to best develop them. Mm. How does someone encourage those strengths within their children? Mm-hmm. Yeah, great question. Um, so as you know, in the book, I've got a whole range of things that, that parents can do. I've also got a website and I've got a lot of free resources up on that website for um, parents to go and look at to, to help with that particular question. You know, the the question is, how do you put it into action? Yeah. Um, and so some, some simple things to do. There are some surveys that you can do. They're up on my website for free, uh, which help you to identify. So surveys that children can do, surveys that teenagers can do, surveys that parents themselves can do, that help them to identify what their strengths 
are. That's the first thing. Second thing to do is um, just engage in this technique called strength spotting. And basically what I invite parents to do is for over the course of a week, just really kind of be a bit of a detective, look at your children's behaviour and just ask yourself, you know, what's the question that, sorry, what's the strength that's sitting underneath that behaviour? So start to get more tuned into where they're performing well, where they have energy, the things that they're self-motivated to do. So you don't have to nag them as a parent to do these particular things. They, you know, they'll just be out the back naturally shooting baskets or they'll be, you know, watching TV but drawing or you, you just notice that they'll jump at the opportunity to do something kind for someone else. So second thing beyond the surveys is the strength spotting. And then the third really easy way of bringing strength into your family is to just start bringing strength into or incorporating strength into the questions that you ask your children. Um, and a really great example is just instead of asking your kids, what did you do at school today? And um, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I don't ever really get a great response when I ask my two kids, what did you do at school today? Um, is to ask them, what strengths did you use today at school? Or what strengths did you see someone else use today at school? So it's just in asking the questions you would ordinarily ask your kids every day, but just incorporating the strength lens into that. Yeah, I, I, I do remember reading that in your book about uh, asking that question, how was school today, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that you'd be lucky if they were like your children, and I'm sure this this is very common, they would be lucky if they yeah. get more than a grunt. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. What happens when, after a period of time, what happens when uh, parents focus on the strengths of of their children mm. well um, beautiful things happen actually but from a science perspective here are the three kind of key benefits of taking a strength-based approach and the first is that it's really a helpful and powerful way of helping your child to achieve their full potential so the thing is if you're always focusing on fixing what's missing in your child compensating for what's lacking fixing what's wrong in them then you really, you're starting at their lowest baseline. Um, the best you can really hope to do is kind of take them from low performance up to about average. If, on the other hand, you put your time and attention more on their skills and their talents, and that's not to say that you don't fix their weak spots, but you put more of your time and attention on their strengths, on their skills, on their talents, then you're starting with your child, with them at their best. You're starting with their highest baseline, and that's when they have the greatest potential or greatest opportunities to reach their full potential. Beyond reaching potential, the research also shows us that it's a really... Um, strength-based parenting is a protective factor, and that's, that's the term that uh, psychologists such as myself would use to say that it's a factor that protects against mental illness. Kids, the research shows that uh, teenagers who have strength-based parents have lower levels of anxiety and depression. They also have higher levels of life satisfaction, self-confidence, self-efficacy. So there's a huge kind of well-being benefit to taking yeah. a strength-based parenting approach. And then the third key benefit is the relationship between you and your kids. It's just, it really genuinely changes the dynamic of the relationship because your kids know that first and foremost you see the good in them, which means, somewhat counterintuitively, that when you do go to have conversations about problem behaviours, about weaknesses, about weak spots, you're less likely to be met with defensiveness from your kids. And so you're actually more, it's a bit of a counterintuitive that the more strength-based you are, the more likely you are to be able to address weaknesses. Um, but it just creates a lovely bond between the parent and the child. And a really beautiful kind of full cycle is that when you start to show your kids their strengths and connect them with their strengths, they learn that they have strengths. They learn that their brothers and sisters have strengths. They learn that their friends have strengths. And they also learn that their parents have strengths. So they start to see the strengths in their parents. So it creates this very appreciative relationship. Yeah, I, I like the way that you use the word perspective because what you're really talking about, aren't you, is, is, is that uh, shifting one's perspective to look at the strengths of people and looking at the, the positive aspects of people. It doesn't mean... Uh, going into denial about other spe other aspects of a person, but um, or even about life, mm -hmm. uh, but um, and, and of course that's how, as children grow, they deal so well or, or better um, with things that that uh, 
uh, happen in in life um, because they're able to to find a perspective that feels better to them rather than a, a really negative perspective uh, yeah. and um, and I think that's what's so I think that's what's uh, so key about what you're teaching as well and uh, and, and your book the strength-based parenting is often uh, when people hear positive psychology or something they think oh yeah but you're just going into denial about all the other stuff and that's yeah. that's not what it's about um, yeah. I mean our, our society is so geared towards looking at the negative side of e of everything and yet if we saw the positive side of things um, yeah. that the negative aspects of, of our world would, would be a blip. Yes, exactly right. You're so spot on, on everything you just said there. It is about perspective. And it, there's always going to be um, day and night, dark and light, good and bad in everyone's life. And it's about where do you place your attention first. And that's why I call the book The Strength Switch because really it's about encouraging parents to switch their attention first to the strength before the weakness. And... Um, what strength-based parenting does is it builds resilience in kids. So when they are faced with life curveballs and challenges and loss and adversity, that they've got this inner toolkit, they've got these resources, which are their strengths, which they know they can rely on to help them navigate their own life. And, you know, sort of coming back full circle to uh, my answer to your first question, Michelle, for me personally, uh, in my 30s, when I first started to recognise that, okay, I've, I've had a tough childhood, I've had mental illness, there are definitely some weaknesses in me, there's no doubt about that, but I also have these strengths, and I was blind to them. I was using them to help myself cope, but I didn't realise I was. And when I started to work with a therapist and realised, see my strengths more clearly, see my kindness, see my ability to communicate, see my psychology skills, see my intelligence, that that's when I really started to heal myself, because... I could use my strength to help myself navigate out of darkness. Yes, and, and, and there's nothing like uh, someone like yourself who's had that negative perspective in, in their very early part of their life and learnt to focus or shift their perspective on positive aspects of a situation that they can look at in a negative way or a positive way and which is which is great and and of course what i like another thing about i like about your book is that you you do talk about your early childhood and and uh the effects that that had on you and uh and i think sometimes when you've had those experiences at a young age it somehow i don't know sometimes i think uh from from what i uh get from some people is that it, it's almost like a springboard for them to uh you know they've, they've at a very young age they've really experienced uh what makes them feel um not good and and yeah. um had a strong experience with that, that that there is that more wanting of of feeling of wanting to feel good i guess yeah i think you're right i mean for me personally it was a very strong motivator to raise my children differently and, you know, to just do everything I could to make sure that they had a happy life um, where their mental health was protected and uplifted. And because of my motivation in my own life to do that for myself and to do that for my children, and then, you know, that's built into my professional life, which then filled into the book. And uh, e even throughout uh, your professional life, I mean, you could very well have chosen to focus in a in a negative way like a lot of old school psychology and psychiatrists do still mm, yeah that's absolutely right and actually i did that for the first few years probably the first kind of almost 10 years of or probably first five years of my career um i was looking really more at the kind of negative end of the spectrum and how do we heal and how do we um, fix what's broken and i was doing a lot of research on stress management and toxic leadership and bullying in the workplace and I, I'm not saying that we don't need that. We absolutely need that. I just think for me in my own um, personal journey, I got to a point where I realised I've done so much professionally and so much personally to kind of address what was wrong and it still hasn't really pushed me forward. It's just got me to a point where I'm no longer depressed. But being no longer depressed is not the same as being happy. There's yes. different things, you know, and I wanted to be happy, um, and I wanted to be happy so that when I raised my children, they would know what happiness was and they could be happy themselves. Oh, wonderful. I, I, look, I, I love your work and 
I, I love this book as well. And thank you, uh, Thanks uh, so much for your time today. And um, and uh, your website. What was your website again? Oh yeah, great. Thank you. So it's www.strengthwitch.com. Wonderful, Dr. Lee Waters. Thanks very much for your time today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me.